Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In this video, you will learn how to install and set up and configure Webpack Dev Server. Now we'll look at how to install and configure Webpack Dev Server that will help us to load just localhost 8080 instead of the ugly file pass as we were looking at before. Firstly, we'll need to install it. So npm i webpack dev server. As you can see from the documentation, the webpack dev server is a extra package. So we need to install it separately. When we look at the package JSON, you'll see that we've got it installed, but we don't have the version two, which would work with webpack two. Okay, so again, we'll look at the versions and see if there is a version which would work with the webpack two and the last version 2.2 .2 is the one we want to install. Okay, so let's install it again and change the version to 2.0. And now we can configure it. We'll open the Webpack config, or oh, actually, firstly, the package JSON, and inside of the script dev, we will change it to Webpack dev server. We'll save it and we'll try to run npm run dev which should kick in the dev server. But as you can see, we're getting an error. And if we scroll up, the error says output path needs to be an absolute path or slash. Okay, so we need to tweak our output. And instead of path, dist like this, we need to do something different. We need to create this path, we need to resolve the path from a directory name. Okay, so the current directory we're in, we need to reference that instead of hard coding the dist. For that, we need to include the path, the node path module. So we require path at the top of the file. And then we'll change the path to be path.resolve, the directory name, and our distribution folder. Okay, so now Webpack will know what our distribution folder is, and it should resolve with any errors. Okay, so let's run it again. And now if we scroll up, there should be an URL. So project is running at localhost 8080. Now we can copy the URL and replace the old file path, and we should still see the same content you only saw a difference between font size and that's because the other page, the previous page was zoomed in, but the content is exactly the same. Back in the Visual Studio Code, if we now open the app.js from the source file and change the console, console log message to hello from app and Webpack dev server, we'll save it. We should see automatically reloading. So the Webpack dev server looks like it's automatically in the watch mode. And if we reload the page, we should see it changed automatically, okay? This doesn't even require us to reload the page. So if I show these two side by side and change it back to what it was, hello from app.js, save it we'll see it recompiled and automatically refreshed. Okay, so as you can see, there is a very little configuration with the latest Webpack dev server and Webpack 2. And in the next video, we will discover more advanced configuration options. But as you can see, this is pretty powerful for just a simple development server and reloading. All we needed to do is to install it and set the package JSON to point to Webpack Dev Server. In the next video, we will see how we can create Webpack Dev Server config file with more advanced options in there. And that's it all for today. Hope you've learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let me know in the comments what do you think about this series. Until next time, happy coding, bye.